Alright, howdy folks, and welcome back to day three of the Modern Horror 31 Days of Halloween. Uh, day three is still in West Craven week. We're talking about the uh, the seventies, The Hills Have Eyes. I liked it. Uh, yeah, the, the Hills Have Eyes is really, really good. I really liked it. I really liked it a lot. I keep thinking about it. <laughs> I, I'm very happy to say that Wes Craven has gotten into a, a much more functional relationship with his, his his composer. His music department. The hillbillies had some weird, funny voices. Like, oh yeah, gee shucks, man. <laughs> And stuff like that. But that was about it. And it didn't really affect the scariness of them. Because they were plenty dang scary. Okay, so the story is... <laughs> <laughs> the story is we're out in the middle of bumfuck nowhere. Sort of near a military base. There is a gas station in the middle of nowhere. And this family of like... Yeah, there's a lot of them. We've got Ma and Pa. And then I think a son and his wife and baby. And then another son and daughter, the two blondes. I think they were siblings. And then that's seven of them. And then two dogs. Two dogs. And a bird. There's a bird. They have a bird? Yeah. The bird got eaten. Oh, yeah, I remember that now. <laughs> yeah. And they're deviating from their path to go to LA yeah. to go see a silver mine I think they inherited. And the gas station owner, who's a harbinger, basically says, No, you don't want to do that because he knows his. So he had a son who had a cut down the middle and he tried the sun like well, he had to cut down the middle because the guy smashed his face in with, yeah. with something because he like killed all of his other kids or something he killed he killed all of his other kids he like ate all his siblings after they were born uh he killed his mom by burning down the house so he like abandons him into the desert and apparently this guy had a whole family out in the desert yeah he like kidnaps a, a hooker or something and and gets her pregnant a million times and raises a weird semi-nuclear hillbilly torture family. Those guys are out randomly in the desert. What happens is they're they're trying to find the mine. They get lost. Mm -hmm. And then a jet from the nearby base does a flyover and freaks them out. And they get scared and accidentally drive their RV off the road and it breaks an axle. Right. So they get stuck there for the night. And that's when everything goes to shit. Because, you know, the, the gas station owner and the fact that it's mostly abandoned has been keeping people from driving through the area where they would get picked off by the, the cannibal family. So they're... Oh, you know, they're they're desperate and they find these guys there and it's like, oh, fresh meat. So they go in and they want to kill everybody and they, kit, they siphon the gas out and they... Uh, kidnap the baby to eat later on. Just mayhem ensues. Hillbilly family is super crazy and super effective, and they do a lot of really good killing. They kill the grandfather, and they kill the father of the family by like they they crucify him and then blow him up to get everybody's attention. It's like and they dramatic. all run out there now to start. Yeah, and they all run out there, and the mom's she freaks out, and this is when I'm like, oh my god, like really s disturbed and scared because she goes. That's not my Robert! And she's laughing. She's not crying. She's just hysterically laughing over the dead body of her husband. And it's just like, okay, I'm officially creeped. It goes it goes off the rocker. It's a pretty nut movie. Like it's one dog gets killed. No, it's it's like the best kind of slasher action, because it's it's intense, but it's not overly serious. Like, they're silly about it, but they're evil because it's freaking awesome and they love it. They're yeah. having a great time being an evil hillbilly torture fan. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, and so, like, they'll say things and they'll laugh and then it'll be creepy. And there's this one girl, like, the daughter, the blonde daughter, who would not stop crying and screaming and stuff. And in any other movie, I'd be like, wow, I can't wait for you to die. Because, you know, you would see that one girl who's in hysterics and you're just like... But it matched. It was... It, it, the whole movie was tense enough to justify it. And her freaking out every five seconds was just like, okay, this is completely understandable. She's stranded in the middle of nowhere. There are Home Alone traps. They're very creative and they're very fun and they use their mother's dead corpse to do one of them, <laughs> which is kind of like, damn. It's symmetry. The, the evil, the you know, the evil torture family used the, the father's corpse as a... So, so they use their own. So they use the mother's corpse as a lure. It's, it's symmetry. It's um, one of the dogs goes off and starts killing people. <laughs> oh yeah, that was awesome. It was it was Beast and Beauty were the two dogs, and Beauty Beast goes down first one out. And so Beast yeah, so, goes on a killing spree. Yeah, the the family dog gets a body count. It's awesome. But then 
Then it just ends. That was weird. Like, they're out in the middle of the desert. The uh, the cannibal has a baby. We're unsure about the, the blonde son and son and daughter, the blonde brother and sister. Yeah, I don't know if he died or not, but they're out there too. And they were, yeah, I think they killed him. And no, they blew up the trailer. They checked to see if he died. There was one point when she jumped up on him and he hugged her and they were like, yay. So I think... I don't remember. They're out there, and it's a little up in the air. Um, and then the dog runs off, the baby is is safe, but they're out, but put down in the middle of the desert. The cannibal daughter is now on the side of the good guys, and we've got one of the other sons, I think it is a son, he's beating the head in of the, the... Yeah, it's the, the, rema- the, the, the remaining family. patriarch versus... The remaining patriarch of the white bread family versus the patriarch of the uh, evil torturer. Yeah, he's trying to trying to save his uh, daughter, and he's just beating and beating and beating, and just super close up because we can't see gore because it's like 1979. <laughs> yeah, it was a disturbing close up. Like you, you could pause and, and count nose hairs. It was really right up there. I think Wes Craven just really likes doing those. Especially he did that a lot in Last House on the Left. But then after he's done beating, he like takes a breath and he's breathing. He looks around. Cut. Roll credits, and it's like. Wait, 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 wait. Where's the resolution? Do they make it back home? They're out in the desert now. Sure, evil redneck families, are they all dead? I think they're all dead. I think uh, I think Hooker Mom is still alive. She didn't go out to, to do the killing part. She was a stay-at-home evil torture mom. So yeah, a uh, little weird ending, but um, I liked it. It, it. it was a lot of fun to watch. I, I saw where a lot of other slashers have gotten their design. Like, I saw a lot of elements of Victor Crowley's design coming out, out of these guys. I see where Rob Zombie gets his entire style. He likes, he must like Wes Craven. He must watch a lot of Wes Craven. It's in probably between... just the 70s grindhouse stuff, and yeah. Wes Craven did some of that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, Final Verdict, definitely thumbs up on Hills Have Eyes. Really good movie. Very fun to watch. Tense action. Great soundtrack. So thanks for, thanks for watching that with us. Uh, We'll be back tomorrow or soon with uh, the continuation of Wes Craven Week in uh, Scream 2. Happy Halloween. Cheers, folks. Spooky, scary skeletons speak with such a screech.